This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can pre-order Dominaria United right now by going to cardkingdom.com slash needsahone or following the link in the description. Hi everyone, I'm Nitsa Hone, and today is Monday, and that means it's time for the 503rd MTG Top 10, the series where I rank cards based on their historical performance at Magic's highest level of competition. At least, that's what I normally do in this series. This time around, we're going to do something a little bit different. Today, I want to take a look at the most powerful Planeswalker Ultimate abilities. This list isn't about which of these Planeswalkers is the best, or the ones that have been the most successful in competitive magic. I already have a top 10 that has covered such a thing. Instead, it's simply about which Planeswalkers have the most powerful ultimates in a vacuum. Ultimates frequently don't matter when we evaluate Planeswalkers. In fact, some of the most powerful Planeswalkers in the game don't have ultimates that are all that impressive. So I thought it would be fun to look at the most game-breaking ultimates out there and allow at least a few more underwhelming Planeswalkers a moment to shine. Basically, these are the ultimates where if your opponent ever gets to them, you lose on the spot a huge chunk of the time. For the purposes of this list, it doesn't really matter how difficult that ultimate ability is to get to. All that matters is how impactful that ability is when it gets used. All right, let's dive into the list. At number 10, I have a Johnny Vengeant. This powerful Planeswalker has an ultimate that is a one-sided Armageddon. That's a pretty amazing effect, since it will generally make it so your opponent won't be able to cast any spells for the foreseeable future, at which point you can simply close out the game. Now, the downside here, and the reason a Johnny only comes in at number 10, is because he doesn't do anything to wipe out the rest of your opponent's board. In other words, even if you blow up your opponent's lands, if they have creatures on the board, it may not actually get you there. Still, a one-sided Armageddon is an impressive effect. At number 9, I actually have three Planeswalkers, because they all have the same ultimate. All three of these Chandras do 10 damage to a player and every creature they control, and actually Chandra Bold Pyromancer actually also hits Planeswalkers, so I guess it technically has the best ultimate of these three, but they're all close enough that I thought I'd include them all. It seems pretty uninspired that these three Chandras all pretty much do the same thing for their ultimate, but Chandra Flames Fury and Bold Pyromancer are both Planeswalker deck Planeswalkers, so I guess I can't be that surprised that they didn't come up with something new. Anyway, this ultimate will usually be a one-sided sweeper that also really drops your opponent's life total at the same time. If you have any board state at all, you'll be able to end the game the turn you use this ability because your opponent will be entirely defenseless. At number 8, I have Gideon, Champion of Justice. This Planeswalker gets a lot of heat, appearing on many people's lists of the worst Planeswalkers ever, including my own first crack at that as an MTG Top 10, and while he didn't appear on my updated list from earlier this year, he still isn't great. The problem is, it can be difficult to get his loyalty up high enough since he demands some player to have a bunch of creatures. And if your opponent's the one with a bunch of creatures, well, it's not going to matter that he can raise his loyalty that much. But that's one of the great things about this top 10, because we get to talk positively about some planeswalkers that don't get much credit. Gideon's ultimate ability exiles all other permanents. That's pretty nuts, because it doesn't say non-land. Once you use that ability, it's pretty hard to imagine you losing, since the board is entirely cleared out and you can crack in with Gideon as a creature. Now, we are assuming here that Gideon has a few loyalty counters left over after using the ultimate, so that he can be the only thing on the board after using the ultimate and close out the game for you. Gideon isn't great in reality because of how difficult it is to pull all of that off, but there's no denying that ultimate is one of the strongest in the game. At number 7, I have Nico Bolas, Planeswalker. This was the first time old Nico Bolas showed up as a Planeswalker, and he is super expensive to cast, but he should be because he's crazy powerful. Among his impressive abilities is an ultimate that does 7 to your opponent, makes them discard 7 cards, and sacrifice 7 permanents. This attacks your opponent on multiple fronts and will generally completely disarm them. They can sacrifice lands, of course, but making your opponent discard their hand, dropping their life a bunch, and making them lose a bunch of permanents, lands, or otherwise is absolutely devastating. At number 6, I have Angrath, Minotaur Pirate. 
I'll be honest, when I researched this list, I didn't even realize this card existed, which isn't too surprising. It's a pretty underwhelming Planeswalker deck, Planeswalker on the whole, but make no mistake, his ultimate is one of the most powerful ones in the entire game. It's a one-sided wrath effect, and that alone is quite impressive, but it doesn't stop there. He also damages your opponent equal to the total power of the creatures they control. The one thing holding it back is it isn't that impressive against decks that don't do a whole lot with creatures, but that's okay. Most games are simply going to end when this ultimate is used. At number 5 I have Elspeth Tyrell. She's another walker with an ultimate that utterly reshapes the board because she destroys all other permanents that aren't lands or tokens. This means that she can stick around in the aftermath, as can all of her token friends, and if you lose your whole board and look over at your opponent who still has a few tokens in play, along with Elspeth, well, you should probably just scoop. At number four, I have everyone's favorite planeswalker, Ugin the Spirit Dragon. This planeswalker is famously powerful and is a card a lot of people hate for that reason. Funnily enough, his ultimate doesn't actually come up a ton in typical gameplay as he usually comes down and wipes the board and then starts using the plus two and then sweeps the board again if necessary. If you do manage to get to that ultimate though, you're really sealing the deal if the game isn't already in hand. You get to gain seven, draw seven, and then put seven permanents on the battlefield. In other words, you get massive card advantage that will also pull you way ahead on board, and if your life total was in a dangerous place, and sometimes it is, the 7 life can help put you out of range of your opponent closing the game out somehow. At number 4, I have Liliana Dreadhorde General. Liliana's ultimate makes your opponent sacrifice every permanent they have, apart from one permanent of each type. This means that they can hold on to one land, one creature, one artifact, and so on. This will usually completely destroy your opponent, and they won't be coming back from it. The one thing that's a bit of a bummer is if your opponent can hold on to something like their own Planeswalker, or a creature that you can't interact with, you might still be in trouble, but most of the time, your opponent holding on to one permanent of each type isn't going to make much of a difference. At number two, I have Nico Bolas, God Pharaoh. Nico Bolas is the only Planeswalker to have two Planeswalker cards on the list, and this ultimate is even stronger than what the original Nico Bolas Planeswalker brought to the table. With his ultimate, Nico Bolas, God Pharaoh, exiles every single non-land permanent your opponent controls. That is a super powerful one-sided board wipe, and I don't need to go too deep on explaining how unbeatable that is. And at number one, it's Karn Liberated. Not only do I think this is the most powerful Planeswalker ultimate around, it's one of the most unique ones, too. Karn completely resets the game, an effect that is unmatched by any card not named Shaharazad, and even that card only has you play a mini game. Restarting the game is one of the most powerful things you can do, since it completely resets a game where you might have been on the verge of losing, but it gets even better, because Karn lets you hold on to the cards he has exiled with other loyalty abilities. So, when the game is reset, started, you get to put those permanents into play for free. I think you can usually expect your opponent to scoop rather than play another game where they start way behind you on board. So those are my picks for the most powerful Planeswalker Ultimate abilities. Do you think there are any that I missed? Let me know in the comments. If you want to use any of the impressive Ultimate abilities on this list, check out the description where you can find a direct Card Kingdom link for each of them. If you want to make sure you catch future MTG Top 10s, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. If you want to catch up on the over 500 other MTG Top 10s I've already made, you should see a playlist on your screen shortly. Thanks for watching.